So we're going to start with an anterior view. We're uh, in the anatomic position, essentially. And you can see the antecubital fossa, the lateral side of the elbow and form, and then the posterior aspect. So posteriorly, the olecranon process is readily palpable, especially in the flexed position. Laterally, you're going to try to identify the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, which is going to be roughly about here. And then if you palpate deeply and especially rotate the forearm, you can feel the radial head. Okay, and then medially, you can often palpate in the medial epicondyle um, of the elbow. So let's go ahead and uh, remove the skin layer. We'll get a look, better look at the, um, at the muscle structure. So of course, anteriorly, you have the biceps muscle, long head and short head of the biceps. And they form the, uh, of course, biceps tendon. Uh, inserting onto the uh, proximal radius uh, to uh, flex the elbow and also uh, supinate. Um, and let's just go ahead and show that. So, uh, of course, elbow flexion, or that's actually um, shoulder flexion. And here you can see elbow flexion. So elbow flexion, but then I also mentioned that um, supination, right? So the biceps is your primary supinator of the form. So here we go, and you can see supination along with the supinator muscle there. So biceps is the prime supinator of the um, form. The brachialis muscle is actually deep to that. That is your prime elbow flexor. Okay, and then we come posteriorly, and you can see, of course, your triceps muscle. And, of course, we already talked about the triceps and the shoulder um, as a triceps tendon. Here's your actual uh, muscle belly. And this is your prime extender of the elbow, and then it starts onto the olecranon process. So we talked about that as being sort of your palpable landmark posteriorly. So laterally, again, I said you should be able to palpate the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and that's an um, origin of multiple forearm muscles, as uh, we'll talk about. Medially, you can palpate the medial epicondyle, shown in green here. Okay, also the origin for multiple uh, muscles and ligaments. Let's go ahead and um, let's get a little bit deeper. So here we're going to get a little bit of a better look at some of your other muscles around the forearm. So you get your brachioradialis here. Right, your extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum. Okay, and those are on the lateral sort of um, lateral aspect of the uh, of the elbow here. And here you can see the extensor carpi ulnaris coming all the way around. And then on the medial side, we've got our pronator teres. Okay, pronate uh, pronates the forearm. And this is, again, coming off your medial epicondyle, followed by your flexor carpi radialis, and then other muscles, including the palmaris longus, and then coming all the way back around is the flexor carpi ulnaris, okay? So, again, medial epicondyle, origin for multiple flexor uh, pronator muscles, and then your lateral epicondyle is uh, a lot of your common extensor muscles or common extensor muscles. Uh, Tendon. All right, let's let's strip the muscles down even a little further, and uh, let's try to see if we can get all the way down to the radial head. So here you can see the radial head. So I said you can palpate it laterally. It's tough. Now, if you go ahead and um, allow for um, forearm rotation, so as we showed, the biceps and the supinator provide forearm rotation. Sometimes if you palpate laterally, along the lateral epicondyle and then drop down and then rotate the forearm. You can do this passively. You can often feel that radial capitellar joint where that rotation is taking place. And that's actually a great landmark to get into the elbow joint. A lot of times we have to aspirate here and surgically uh, as we uh, are dissecting, we are trying to palpate that area. So these are uh, some of the uh, some of the deeper structures that are a little bit hard to palpate. Um, some structures you really can't palpate at all. Coronoid process of the ulna. You know, these are surgical um, and radiographic um, uh, landmarks that you need to know. Really difficult to get a finger on necessarily. So uh, those are some of the um, 
the main anatomic muscle groups uh, around the elbow. So some of the bony landmarks in the elbow you gotta be uh, aware of are the uh, olecranon process posteriorly, okay, that's part of the ulna, okay, and then the lateral epicondyle, which is the next most obvious lateral bony structure here. And then we kind of rotate around the medial epicondyle, which is on the medial side, and that's again the humerus. So you have the lateral and medial epicondyles of the humerus itself. Let's come back around and over. So um, another thing that is palpable if you look for it is a radial head. So if you if identify this is the lateral epicondyle, if I put my thumb in between here and then I supinate and pronate, right? So supinate is sort of with the palm up, pronate is with the palm down. So if I supinate and pronate, I'm rotating that radius and the radial uh, capitellar joints, which my thumb is right in that spot there. And I can feel on the, on the sort of the radial side of my thumb, I can feel that radial head rotating back and forth. And the other side of my thumb is against the uh, lateral epicondyle. So that's an area we might have to check. Uh, it's an area where you may have to localize where is the radial head because uh, the patient has tenderness at the radial head. Um, you may want to identify that there's pain in this spot. So um, posteriorly in the elbow, you want to look for um, the triceps mechanism. So the triceps muscle is in the back of the upper arm and then inserts onto the olecranon process. Uh, this is what allows the elbow to extend. Okay, so if, uh, similarly to the quadriceps mechanism, if you palpate here and there's a lot of tenderness, you may worry about tendonitis. If there's a defect and a patient cannot extend the elbow, especially against resistance or gravity, you worry about a triceps tear, which would be right about at this level. Um, the uh, uh, lateral um, part of the elbow here is another area where you can get some tenderness. So remember, uh, the, 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 the lateral elbow is uh, where you have your common extensor tendon. Uh, so the, the muscles that extend the wrist and fingers uh, forms a common tendon here. This is an area where you can get uh, inflammation and uh, when the patient has tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis, it's gonna be pain right in roughly this area near the lateral epicondyle and extending a little bit distally. Um, so that is uh, something you can look for uh, to elicit pain. You can have the patient extend uh, the fingers and if you resist extension, um, they may uh, elicit pain in this area right here. Uh, so that's something uh, that uh, you, you can look for on the lateral side of the elbow. Uh, if we go over to the medial side of the elbow, the uh, muscle flexor pronator mass comes in and inserts uh, on the medial side here. And if somebody has a medial epicondylitis or so-called golfer's elbow, they may have pain in, in this area. So with the elbow in the sort of anatomic position like this, you can also uh, check for uh, st stability and motion. So the elbow is a pure hinge joint. So pretty much it's gonna go from extension to flexion, and this is the motion you're gonna, you're gonna be checking for if you're worried about instability due to ligament damage on the medial lateral part of the elbow, you may need to potentially uh, you know, grasp the humerus and sort of check varus and valgus stress to identify uh, if there's instability. And sometimes you can get a rotatory instability, which is a little bit more complex we won't be getting into here. So in the uh, antecubital fossa, right, where a lot of times you'll see people draw blood or place uh, IVs, um, you're also going to palpate the biceps tendon. So the biceps tendon is right about here. It inserts onto the proximal radius. Of course, the biceps muscle is right here. So you should be able to palpate that. If you're worried a patient has a rupture, you might have pain or feel a little bit of a softness or defect here. Um, we talked about the flexor pronator mass here. Uh, you also have the so-called mobile wad. Okay, and this is the uh, brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. So this is sort of on the lateral aspect of the arm, a little bit volar, uh, and forms a so-called uh, mobile wad of muscles. Um, 
and uh, many of the other muscles are a little bit uh, uh, harder to uh, palpate in your uh, volar and uh, dorsal compartment.